been a while since I uploaded my last video and I thought I'd just share something um, that I've been using for quite a bit now. It's called a VPN. For those of you who are unaware of what a VPN is, um, it basically stands for a virtual private network. Um, so think about your home network, for example, if you use one, or a network at your work. How do you access this network without as actually being physically connected to it? Uh, physically connected obviously means um, that being plugged in via Ethernet or being connected to it uh, using the wireless internet that you know your workplace or your home network might use. So one way to get around this is using this, um, what you call a virtual private network service, uh, a VPN service essentially. And a VPN offers many advantages. Uh, at my house personally, I use a VPN um, set up on something called a Raspberry Pi. You guys might have heard of what the Raspberry Pi is. It's a $35 computer. And what I did essentially with it is I plugged it into my network and I set up a PPTP VPN protocol on, on the device. And what this does is when I'm at school or you know out of the country or traveling for example and I want to access files on my shared network at home the hard drives or the network network attached storage NAS on my home network. What I can do is I can basically connect to my uh, Raspberry Pi device, and it'll present me with all the computers and all the hard drives that are on my network, which I can access then from anywhere in the world. So in that sense, a VPN is you know an excellent way to bring uh, bring over you know the resources you need that might be at your home computer. To, with you anywhere in the world without, without actually physically you know carrying the hard drives with you. But um, there's also different uses that a VPN may provide. This is especially true if you're in a country where the government censors you know material on the internet. For example, I know Saudi Arabia, uh, United Arab Emirates, um, I'm not sure about Saudi Arabia, but I know the United Arab Emirates definitely does censor um, material on the internet. China is another country that censors material on, on the internet. And for individuals living in these countries, a VPN service, you know, can offer something really advantageous. It can allow the citizens of the country to bypass the government censorship and access websites and things um, that they would not be able to access before. Just um, And also another thing that a VPN service, more commonly what people use it for these days, is to access sites that are restricted by regions. For example, I'm in Canada right now, and if I were to try to go to Hulu.com, which is an American-based site that only allows Americans, you know, to watch a video, it'll give me an error message. Sorry, you know, our currently our library can only be watched from within the United States. So right now I can't get past this um, because I have a Canadian IP address. My IP address is provided by my internet service provider or my ISP and this IP address uh, geolocates me to Canada which means that sites such as this and certain videos on YouTube for example I can't access them and one way I can get past this is through using um, a VPN service. What a VPN service does is it allows me to remotely connect to a network. So let's say this network is in the United States for example what then happens is that my IP address, when I'm connected to this VPN service, converts into an American IP address. So then I can access websites such as Hulu without having any problems whatsoever. Um, because basically, essentially the website gets tricked into thinking that I'm accessing it from a United States network instead of a Canadian one. Um, so traditionally, if you wanted a VPN service, um, you might be aware of this, um, there are a couple of ones available but they're paid they usually charge you around four or five dollars a month and if you're on a tight tight budget a very tight budget um, like a student like me um, this is not possible I need to access a VPN in America to do various things I'm not particularly you know keen on accessing content that's American but for other things I want to access an American uh, you know IP address and some of the ways I do that is through free service called um, Super Free VPN. Um, so what I would have to do, this is a PPTP type of VPN. It's the same type of VPN that my Raspberry Pi uses that's currently sitting at my house. Um, and so what I have to do basically is enter this information 
into my um, VPN settings. And I'll show you that just in a bit, how to do that. But I don't really like using super free VPN because it, I find it fairly slow. So another service that I use is afreevpn.com. And as you can see, they provide a VPN account for UK IP addresses. Um, a USA VPN server, free account, and a Canadian one. The Canadian one is pretty much useless to me since I already have a Canadian IP address. So I don't really need to use that. What I'm interested in is a US one for reasons um, not mainly due to, uh, I don't really really care about the mature, the content, but for other reasons. Um, Google Voice and those kind of things. So what I do is, um, these instructions are for OS 10, but um, rest assured that you can probably find them on the internet for um, Windows 8, Windows 7, or whatever version of Windows you use. You can also probably find them for Linux. Um, so I just clicked on the Apple logo and I go to System Preferences. Now, within System Preferences, um, I went to the Network setting. And it will provide me with all the different types of connections that I have available at the moment. Um, currently I have already one VPN set up, which is my work VPN. And next, what I want to do is I want to add another VPN, um, you know, I want to add this VPN service. So to, to, to do that, I simply click on the plus button at the bottom, which creates a new service. Then it will tell you what kind of interface do you want to choose. The interface that I'm interested in particularly in is VPN, since we're setting up a VPN protocol. And as it says in the configuration, the VPN type is PPTP. So I'll set this as PPTP as well. And I'll name it as US Connection. And I'll create that VPN. Now it's added, as you can see. But it says it's not configured yet. So we just have to configure it a little bit more. Um, so first and foremost, obviously you're going to have to tell your computer what the address of the VPN server is. So in our case, the address is us.afreevpn.com. So I'll enter that. And the account name is afreevpn.com. And next what we need to do is also enter the password, which is 2381. So I clicked on authentication settings and make sure the password tab is highlighted and enter in 2381. We don't need to worry about RSA secure ID or anything like that since we're not using, you know, a Cisco provided VPN service or something like that. So I'll click OK. And now um, we still haven't fully configured the VPN service. To do that, click on the advanced button and make sure that send all traffic over VPN connection. That setting is enabled. So click on that and click OK. And as you can see on my taskbar up here, I have a VPN little icon there that I can click on and connect quickly to the US or whatever VPN I want to connect to. And to do that, I just click highlight it and click this um, show VPN status in the menu bar setting. So I'll press apply right now actually. And now everything should be set up. As you can see right now, we're not connected to the US connection. So Hulu and all that will still give me the error that it gave me before. Well, it just gave me the error, but let me try playing, you know, let me try playing something. I highly doubt it will connect. And it'll give you an error in a second. See, it still says we're not in the United States, right? But now, let me try connecting to the US connection. And as you can see, it's connecting right now. It'll authenticate, and there we go, bam, I'm connected to the network. Now, sometimes you might need to restart your uh, browser to, you know, for the settings to take effect for some reason. But let me just try refreshing it, see if it works. See, it still says, you know, it's not going to let me do that. So I'm not going to close this browser, but I'll open up um, Safari and close it and reopen it. And I'll 
stop that and go to hulu.com so you might need to restart your browser once you connect to the VPN service and as you can see um, I didn't get any error messages at the moment so hopefully it works fingers crossed um, And it should be connecting right now. Uh, in a bit, I'll also go over some client options that you have available um, to stream the content. I think it's buffering right now, considering we haven't got... There we go. It's playing. Now, I'll just stop this for the sake of copyright um, troubles, but you get the idea. Essentially, I have an American IP address right now. So I'll go to speedtest.net. Ah, I can't type today. And you'll see my IP address will be an American one instead of a Canadian one since I'm connected to the VPN service. Yep, that's an American IP address. And it thinks I'm near Chicago, which is in the US. So it works. Now, one downside to using this free VPN service is that, you know, they do sort of limit your connection speeds that you get. You're not paying for the connection, so can't really complain there but typically I get around 11 to 12 Mbps and while connected to the VPN my speed drops to around 2 to 3 megabits per second um, that's not a big deal but it is significantly slower than my normal connection speed um, if you want to get that high speed VPN service you'd have to pay over like five dollars or six dollars a month just google you know VPN services and you'll find one really quickly that will offer you significantly faster speed. The upload speed is still good. My normal speed is around 2. I'm still getting 1.8 so that's not bad. Um, so yeah, we're basically set up to a VPN service now. Um, so at this point in time I also want to take you through other options that are available. These options involve you know, installing extensions or clients in order to do the same thing as what a VPN does. Um, it's just easier for some people considering that there is no configuration required whatsoever in order to use these clients or extensions so one really popular project that you know people use to bypass censorship is Tor um, so Tor is slower I have to admit it's rather slow because um, essentially people volunteer their bandwidth um, to the Tor network and then other individuals using the client can connect to um, these individuals and you know bypass censorship or whatever so you just simply download the Tor client and press the connect button that's all you have to do in order to connect to Tor sometimes you don't get an American IP address though you get a UK one or one from you know different areas of the world um, besides Tor another one that I used to use before uh, before I found out about VPN was Podflux. Um, so it's Podflux is you know another, similar to Tor. Just download a client for your respective operating system, and then press the connect button. I actually have it installed still, so I'll demo it. So I'll just click on Podflux, and it takes one or two seconds to load up. It runs, I believe, on Java. It's a Java applet, so it is a little bit sluggish on Macintosh. Not too sluggish though, it's not really that noticeable. So Spotflux loads up, all you have to click is enable button, and that's it. You're done with Spotflux. I'll just exit it for right now, because I don't need it. And besides Spotflux, another um, really easy way to bypass you know, the restriction barriers, uh, more specifically, is Media Hint. Um, Media Hint, I've, I don't use it because I really don't trust, you know, uh, extensions and what they're capable of doing. I have no idea if they can track my, you know, browsing history or something like that. So, although I haven't heard anything bad about it, and I, a lot of people use it, so I believe that it's a, uh, a reliable company. I mean, there's 37,000 users. That can't be wrong, right? And it's got a five-star rating with 26 user reviews. So I'm pretty sure it's a reliable app. I just don't use it since I'm more comfortable with the VPN service 
because because I can disable it, enable it, and disabling and enabling extensions, you know, requires a lot more effort. So all you have to do in this is add to Firefox, and it takes care it takes care of everything. You don't really have to do anything else um, with Media Hint, and it's for Firefox as well as the Chrome browser. Um, so yeah, that's essentially my brief, you know, look into VPN services and what you can do. Um, I wouldn't recommend using them for, you know, you know any illegal activities, um, considering that most of these free VPN services, aside from Tor, since Tor's entire purpose is anonymity, I completely butchered by that word, but okay, whatever. Yeah, but for example, um, if you go to super free VPN, they tell you right off the bat that you know illegal activities are not allowed on this and they do log your activity so if you do get caught doing something illegal and the authorities you know demand um, them to hand over your information super free VPN has you know makes it explicit that they will hand over your information so that's one thing to keep in mind you know if you're using a VPN service to do something that's not legal, I would, you know, strongly tell you not to use one for that reason. You shouldn't be doing anything illegal anyways, but I'm not going to preach about that since, yeah, we've all, we've all heard of that. Um, but yeah, that's all I have to show you. So superfreevpn.com, Tor, Media Hint, Spotflux, um, freevpn, afreevpn.com and in the next video I'll show you basically how to set up uh, your own VPN server so that let's say you live in America but you're traveling you know you're traveling to Canada like for example my cousins they live in the States but they travel to Canada quite a bit and they miss not having that huge repertoire of um, you know Netflix movies and uh, being able to access Pandora the Hulu Plus account and things like that so what they can do is simply use, you know, something like a Raspberry Pi and set up a VPN service on it. They can also use the other options that I covered before, but they can use a Raspberry Pi, for example, have a VPN set up, and from Canada, when they're at my house, they can basically connect to their um, home VPN and obtain that US IP address and access all the material that they want to access um, while being in Canada. So I mean that's another really you know advantageous advantageous and yeah used to a VPN service. If you're traveling and you're a U.S. citizen, you can access all this material that you should have access to, um, despite not being in America. Um, that was all I had to talk about today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it wasn't too long or boring. And if you learned a little bit about VPN and how to set them up. Um, please feel free to like the video and leave a comment. I would love to know how I'm doing with these videos and if they're helpful, you know. Um, thanks again for taking the time to hear me out and I hope you have a great 2013.